lovers, it is G-Swiss here and I'm here today to talk about all the book series that I completed in 2023. <laughs> This is a video I look forward to filming every year because it's the video where I pretty much get to brag. <laughs> yes, I do have bragging rights for this entire video because I completed a total of 36 series, which is more than last year. Well, I mean, one series more than last year. I did have to remove the Zodiac Wolves series because technically we are getting the finale in 2024 and I had no idea that that was going to be an extended finale. So I decided to remove the Zodiac Wolves. But if I included the Zodiac Wolves, on the series, like the four books that we were gonna have following Ayla and Caden specifically, then it would have been 37. But taking that series out of the equation, I'm just gonna talk about the 36 series I completed. Some of these are kind of rounded up based on the characters that we are following in series, and if we're not gonna get a continuation sequel to their story specifically, there is a series that I'm gonna be referring to where there is that kind of situation. But yeah, for the most part, these are just complete series, and I will be going through them today. Interjection from the future book lovers. So firstly, I've taken out my review for the one St. Martin's Press series that I did read in 2023. So that is one series that I won't be mentioning, but I'm acknowledging it as a series that I've completed. Secondly, I mentioned a series in the video that actually was not a completed series. And the funny thing was, thirdly, I did not mention a series that is actually a completed series. However, I had no idea that it was actually completed. So technically, I still read a total of 36 series, which I'm really happy about that. I will insert this future d -Swiz somewhere throughout the video just to get the accurate timeline of when I completed certain series. Back to past G-Swiz. So I guess without further ado, let's get straight into all the series I completed within 2023. And I will also go into how I rated them. And if I'm looking down in this direction, by the way, it's because my laptop, which has as the spreadsheet is on my chair, so if I look down, that is why. The first series I completed in 2023 was the Unearthly series by Laura Falassa. Now, it being the first series that I completed in 2023 is a big reason why. It's definitely one of the most memorable series from Laura Falassa that I read in 2023. I do mention that in my top 23 of 23 video. However, I did give this series a four out of five stars in total. <laughs> the first two books being like three-ish stars, both of them, I was like, oh yeah, no, I don't like these first two books that much. I just found them to be okay. They were definitely probably my least favorite Laura Falassa books I read, but the series progressed to be so much better. I think one of the books I rated a four out of five stars, and then two of the books in the series I rated a five. So I just rounded it up to a four stars altogether. I still think about the series to this day. It's definitely one of the most memorable series I read in 2023, and I think it was a great series to kick the year off with. And the second series I completed in 2023 was Beastars. Yes, I finally completed Beastars in 2023 because the final volume of Beastars came out in January of 2023 and I gave the series an overall rating of four to five stars because that was pretty much my average rating when it came to the volumes. There were some volumes that I gave five out of five stars but I would say that that was more like in season one's arc. I loved, absolutely adored season one's arc and I'm not going to say that the rest of the series is not as enjoyable. I just think that season one was where Beastars kind of peaked. I don't know, it's just the final last episodes of season one and and the final last chapters of that part of the manga. Oh my goodness, that was just so compelling. I still cannot stop thinking about that. But in terms of the rest of the series, I found it to be okay. I'm looking forward to see how it's gonna get animated and if it's gonna be like even more dramatic. I like the series overall. I still gave it a four out of five stars and I still think of it fondly. I think I'm gonna revisit it in the future as well. And the next series that I read in 2023 was The Covenant Saga, which I read soon after the Unearthly series. And I'm so happy that I did because it very much relieved my book hangover that I was experiencing from the Unearthly series because the Unearthly series gave me a really bad book hangover. Yeah, the Covenant Saga, I also gave a four out of five stars. No surprise there. There were moments where the love triangle got a little bit annoying, but if the love triangle did not get a little bit annoying, then I would have actually really loved the series. It honestly took me a while for me to ship the main love interest with the protagonist because as much as I do love them two together and I understand why they work, I also kind of love the other love interest 
as well. So that is also where I was conflicted, but I am looking forward to reading the spinoff that follows the other love interest. I'm honestly hoping that Jennifer does them justice like she was able to do Zane justice in um, his spinoff series as well. And the next book series I completed in 2023, it's actually a book series I forgot that I even completed. I kind of forgot some of my reading experience. Actually one of these books ended up on my most disappointing reads of 2023. So I completed the Little Bridge Island series in 2023 and the reason why I think it's kind of forgettable is because the first book, while it was marketed as a romance, it's not necessarily romantic, it's definitely more slice of life. And then the second book has a nice romance but not like a really good one. But the third book, No Words, has a very good romance. I really like it and I would kind of recommend No Words to those who are wanting a book like Bee Tree, but definitely not the same as Bee Tree. Like we do follow two writers here and the island and stuff. Beachy vibes, writers, you know, all that good stuff, right? This series was okay. I see that I rated it a four to five stars and I suspect that's because I rated the first book like a three, the second book a four, and then the final book a five. But I might just like bump it down to a 3.5 maybe because the second book of the series was kind of also a little bit forgettable, but I loved the third book. So I will still give the third book a five out of five stars. And the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare. This book series, peaked at number one. I hate to say that, but it did. I didn't hate the final book. I loved the first half of the final book, but the second half, I was just like, no, I'm sorry. This is just not as epic as I suspected it was gonna be. I am also not a fan of what Cassie did to one of the characters in this book. I'm just not okay with how that happened. I think, if anything, the, the character that should have died should have been a character that did everyone dirty earlier on and in book three sacrificed themselves for the greater good, but that was not what happened. Instead, another character had to suffer. I give this series an overall rating of a 3.75 out of 5 stars, considering that the first book was like a 5 out of 5 stars. You know what? I don't know how to mentally average out these ratings, but initially, according to my book tracker, I put it as 4.5 out of 5 stars. It took me a while for me to realize that Chain of Thorns was not good. I read it and I was enjoying it, but then I realized, wait a second, this is the last time we're going to be seeing these characters. Yeah, that wasn't a good finale. <laughs> like, it's a good solid sequel but not a great finale so I bumped my rating down for Chain of Thorns from like five out of five stars down to a three because I realized it wasn't good that makes the first book a five out of five stars and the next two books a three out of five stars so how does that like go down maybe 3.75 out of five stars I'll say that it's an okay series it could have been my favorite series by Cassandra Clare but unfortunately it doesn't beat the infernal devices for me and the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Fix It Witches series Actually, there's another book that spins off from the series, but I just realized that this entire trilogy just follows the three witches that we've been following this whole time. I don't know how the spinoff plays into this world later, but I did complete the Fix It Witches like initial trilogy. So I will count the Fix It Witches trilogy <laughs> also because I was not prepared for a spinoff. Anyway, overall, I rated the Fix It Witches series a 3.75 out of 5 stars because the first book is just okay. The second book is my favorite book in the series, and the third book book was decent. I do like the third book and I love how the third book ends, but the romance in the third book did not grab me as much as the second romance in the series. So yeah, overall I did enjoy this trilogy. It was a very fun time and I cannot wait to read the spinoff, which is like the only purple house in town or something like that. And the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. I really enjoyed the series. I did not love the third book as much as the first two, but I still loved it overall. I think I gave the first book a four to five stars, the second book a five, but then the third book a three. So it looks like I rounded it up to a four stars in total. The next book series I completed was the Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree, and I gave this a four out of five stars altogether because I'm pretty sure I gave three out of the six books a four to five stars. I gave the first book a three out of five stars, and then I gave two of the books a five out of five stars. So I just decided average rating was four. So altogether, it's a four to five star series, but it did make my favorites list. And then I read the Ruled by 
Blood series by May Sage. This was a very quick duet, very small like novella length book that just so happened to be combined in a bind up from the Arcane Society. So I devoured the series. I enjoyed it. It was like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I didn't love the first book as much, but the second book I really enjoyed. I think I gave the first book a 3 stars and I gave the second book a 4 stars. So I rounded it to a 3.5. But then I read the Demon Queen Trials and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars altogether. I'm pretty sure I gave the finale a 5 out of 5 stars. And the funny thing about how I rated this on my spreadsheet, it says that it was like a 4 stars altogether. I think I'm gonna bump the rating up to 4.5 because I remember one of the sequels being really good so I gave it like 4.5 and then I gave the finale a 5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> so I reckon I'm gonna adjust the rating altogether and I'm just gonna bump it up to a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then I completed Crazy Food Truck. This manga series had a lot of potential and I reckon that it probably got cancelled. This manga series either got cancelled or the author just stopped writing it in general and that really makes me upset because it had so much potential. I think that the series could have gone on for a much longer time and I get it. It's a very wacky premise but it was a good one. Like the series was a very fun one. I don't know. I'm just really upset about this one. I was really enjoying my read of it. However, when the series finally came to its conclusion and we got that final chapter, I was like, oh, uh, I don't know if this is good. It kind of gave me the ick. I loved the rest of the series but the final chapter definitely gave me the ick. It looks like I rated it a four to five stars. I'm so generous with these four stars, I swear. I'm probably gonna rate it a 3.5 in retrospect. <laughs> By the way, all these ratings are my initial ratings at the time, but I'm giving myself some room to change my mind in this video because months have passed, at least for some of these. <laughs> Everyone's getting married. I gave this one a four to five stars initially because I believe that maybe one of these volumes I gave like a five and then maybe an odd one I gave like a three. But when I think about the series overall, I gave it like a four to five stars. It was okay, maybe 3.5. Like around that area, I'd say. The Deliciously Dark Fairy Tale series. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars, mainly because I gave majority of the series a 5 out of 5 stars, but I gave the first book a 3 stars. So I will definitely settle on a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. It was definitely one of the best series I read in 2023, and I'm just really happy that I finally got to it in 2023. The next book series I read was Crave. Yes, I finally completed the Crave series. I'm not including the spinoffs here, just the Crave series that follows Grace and Hudson, and I gave the series an overall rating of four stars because I think that majority of the series is a four star series but then there were some five star books as well like Court and Charm. There were some three star books as well like Crave and Crush and then there were two four star books so I reckon that four stars is a great average for this book series in particular. I really enjoyed my reading experience of the series and I'm kind of sad to see it go. <laughs> Here is a book series with no rating, The Cat and Mouse Duet. I did not rate this because I don't know how I could rate this. I definitely can't morally recommend it, that's for sure. <laughs> Honestly, the reading experience was exhilarating. I will say that. I had a very enjoyable time reading it, but also a lot of WTF moments. Like I remember gasping and being shocked and I was telling Camillo all about the experience. I'd just be like, babe, you would not believe what I read about. It's just such a messed up series. I don't know how I could rate this series. And I am content with leaving it unrated. I'm not gonna morally recommend it to anyone, but I'm just gonna say this. I had a fun time reading it. Okay, I had a fun time reading it. I'm not gonna go out and encourage everyone to read it though. <laughs> and the next book series I completed in 2023 was the A Vine Mess series by Tessa Bailey. I rated this a four out of five stars, but considering how much I don't like Secretly Yours, I think I'm gonna bump down that rating, which will take the series rating down a little bit. So maybe I'd now say the series gets like a 3.75 out of five stars. I loved the second book so much, so that's why I gave it a five out of five stars. But the first book, I. I really just did not like. I talk about that in my most disappointing reads of 2023. And the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Good Girls series by Holly Renee. I really enjoyed this one. That's why I gave it a four out of five stars because I gave every single one of the books a four out of five stars. These were just fun contemporary romances and I kind of wish that more people read them. Like they are just absolutely so cute. And I think I'm gonna revisit them in the future because they were adorable and they were just super quick to read. And the next series I completed this year is a series I don't even even know if I should rate maybe well I actually rated it three out of five stars. That my friends is Pleasure and Corruption. This series made me feel a little bit uneasy. I do like how it explores kink but it's still within a high school setting so that's what made me feel uneasy about certain things. I was wondering how the Dom like protagonist knew what to do in certain situations when she was asserting dominance let's just say that and then I found other things to be a little bit uncomfortable but I did kind of enjoy 
the overall message at the end about how BDSM is meant to be explored in a safe way. But at the very same time, the series starts off as a bully romance anyway. I mean, it makes sense why it starts off as a bully romance because every single one of these characters are terrible people. And I don't know if the bullying is justified in the specific way that it's done to the character that it's done to, but the character who is the victim of the bullying also did terrible things as well. It's a very blurry series, like I don't know where I stand with it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. It's not necessarily as brutal as the cat and mouse duet, but it's still a dark romance that deals with such heavy topics. Not necessarily just BDSM and kink. This series in general gets pretty dark and messed up at times, and other subplots as well. And back to future G-Swiz. So the series that I forgot to mention within this lot that just so happens to be complete is the Avalon Bay series by L. Kennedy. This series I actually just assumed was going to be like five or six books, similarly to the Off Campus series. Like the Off Campus series is a five book series, but I've noticed that L. Kennedy has done like shorter series, but I did not expect Avalon Bay to be a three book series. I actually thought that the series was going to continue, but I think L. Kennedy is moving on to other projects and I don't see there being a possibility of like another character coming out of thin air <laughs> to follow within this series. So I'm going to count it as a complete series. And I think my overall rating for the series has got to be like a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I don't like the first book, Good Girl Complex. I just don't necessarily like the Mr. Celia Girl concept of that book. But the other two books in the series are really good. I think that the series gets better with each book. Like yes, I did like Bad Girl Reputation, but The Summer Girl is my favorite book in the series. And I think I gave the second book a 4 out of 5 stars. And the third book, I think I gave like a 4 or a 4.25 out of 5 stars. But I'm happy to say that for now, the series rating gets like a 3.75 out of 5 stars because I really did not like the first book. <laughs> but I do like the series overall and I think I will reread the series in the future without out revisiting Good Girl Complex because the love interest in that book is absolutely hypocritical and he shows his hypocrisy throughout the rest of the series when he tries to be the bigger man. I'm like, no, dude, you literally stole someone else's girlfriend. Please stop being morally superior. Anyway, back to past G-Swiz. And the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Dark Court Rising series by Beck McMaster. I loved the series so much. It made my favorites list. It made my top five of the year. This series is so good. If you are wanting a really good romantic, this is a really good romantic. See, I highly recommend it. It's just so romantic, but also just a very great story, and I just love Tiago. <laughs> Overall, I gave the Dark Court Rising series a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was so close to a 5, but the first book and the last book got lower ratings than the bridging novella and the second book in the series. Overall, the series was still great, and the only new series I read this year that got a 5 out of 5 stars consistently all together combined was the War of Lost Hearts series by Carissa Broadbent. I could not help but give this series a 5 out of 5 stars. You know what? Initially I rated the first book a 4 out of 5 stars and I was maybe considering bumping down the rating for the final book but no. This series is perfect. It's a 5 out of 5 stars in my opinion. I could not change my mind as soon as I wrote down that rating. It's just such a good series. I think overall every decision that Carissa made made sense in this book series. I'm in love with this book series. I want everyone to read it. If you are looking for a series to motivate you and to impact you, I would highly recommend The War of Lost Hearts. It's just incredible. But then we go downhill because after reading The War of Lost Hearts, I decided to pick The King Maker Chronicles up to satisfy the book hangover. <laughs> and the reason why I'm listing this as a completed series is because I completed the first three books that follow the main couple. And then every other book is essentially a spinoff. Kind of similar to how A Court of Thorns and Roses, like the initial trilogy is what follows Feyre and Resand, and then after that it's just spin-offs that have their own side adventures and stuff. So I decided to just list the first three books as a complete series because I feel as if it's a complete series, honestly. You can't change my mind. A Curse of Queens that felt more like a spin-off than it did a sequel. Like, you can't change my mind there. This trilogy, initially I rated it a three out of five stars. Maybe, I don't know if I'll keep that rating because I did like the first book and I did like the third book, but I despise the second book. The second book got a two two out of five stars. I think I'm gonna bump it down even further. So maybe the overall rating of the series will just go down to like a 2.5 or something. I really did not want to define how I feel about the series based on that second book, but 
Honestly, it's really hard not to, especially because Griffin does not improve after that one scene that happened in the second book where he's chucking a violent tantrum. So I did complete that trilogy and I have regrets because I should have quit the series after reading about that violent tantrum. And in 2023, I also completed a Yashimon, which makes me feel a little bit sad because I had no idea that the series got cancelled and I feel even worse because this was from the mangaka of Hell's Paradise which did successfully. I'm not too sure if Ayashimon was a series that was written after Hell's Paradise or beforehand, but I feel as if Hell's Paradise and its mangaka took two hits this year. Not only Ayashimon got cancelled, I'm not too sure if it got cancelled this year, but I only found out recently. But yeah, they took two hits in general because Ayashimon got cancelled and the Hell's Paradise adaptation just does not look good. I'm sorry. I cannot believe that Studio Mappa, those who animated Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, did Hell's Paradise as well. Like, I want to watch Hell's Paradise, but it's an eyesore. So I'm probably gonna read the manga in the future. I'm just really sad that Ayashimon got cancelled, but from what I read in Ayashimon, I think that it was very smart. It was very fun to read, and I really wish that I got a full series following these characters, because I reckon it was an awesome premise. But overall, unfortunately, it did not do well on Shonen Jump, so yeah, it got cancelled. But overall, I rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was okay overall, but I would have wanted to see everything just get a little bit more fleshed out rather than rushed, but I did like the ending for something that just so happened to be cancelled because it wrapped things up very nicely and it got a bit meta. I liked that. And then, of course, I read the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. I gave the series a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Majority of the books in the series I gave like a 4 out of 5 stars, but then there were books in the series I also gave a 5 out of 5 stars. So that explains the rating. I did enjoy the series overall. It's definitely one of my favourites of the year. It's not my favourite favourite, but it's definitely the best dark romance I read in 2023. And the the reason why I said that The War of Lost Hearts was the only new series I gave 5 out of 5 stars was because I also reread The Bargainer series by Laura Falassa. This series, 5 out of 5 stars, hands down, love it, obsessed with it, even more obsessed with it now, even more in love with Desmond Flynn. I constantly just think about these two. I love these two so much and I cannot get over this love story. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Laura, definitely my favorite author. Love her, love the series, love everything about this. But then I completed the Soulmate Equation series. I loved this second book. The first book was just okay. So that's why overall I gave it a rating of 3.5 out of 5 stars altogether. I did give the second book a 4 out of 5 stars and I gave the first book a 3 out of 5 stars. I was just expecting more from a Christina Lauren series, especially because I kept on hearing that The Soulmate Equation was one of their best books. Yeah, no, it was definitely one of my least favorite I've read from them. And that's probably because I had really high expectations for it. I was saving it to like being one of the last Christina Lauren backlist books from their contemporary romances that I would read and unfortunately I just really did not enjoy The Soulmate Equation as much as I wanted to. And then I read The Broken the Beautiful series by Tessa Bailey and this was a pleasant surprise. This contemporary romance series was honestly so fun. I really enjoyed it and I didn't think that I would love it as much as I did and I think that's because I read Secretly Yours this year and I really didn't like it. However, I had a great time with this series. I think I gave the first book a 3 out of 5 stars, the second book a 4, and the third book a 5. So that's why I've rounded it up to a four star rating. I loved it and I'm hoping that her other backlist series are just as comforting as this one because I love a good comfort read. I love a good comfort romance in particular. And the next book series I completed in 2023 was the Fallen World series by Laura Falassa. I think I gave this an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think I gave one of the books a 4 out of 5 stars, one a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and the other a 5. I love this series. It blew my mind. It was also really dark. Like the romance was very toxic but it was just a train wreck I could not look away from. And then I reread the Dark Element series in 2023 and I gave the series an overall rating of 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think I bumped up one of the book's ratings because I actually appreciated one of the books much more than my first read of it. I liked the finale much better than the first time I read it. <laughs> overall, I really enjoyed my 2023 reread of the series but I enjoyed the Harbinger series even more. <laughs> I mean, that is to be expected. So I reread the Harbinger series in 2023 and oh my goodness, I loved the Harbinger series a lot when I first read it, but 
I adored and marveled at my reread of the series. This is definitely one of the best series that Jennifer has put out. And I'm really hoping that another spin-off will take place in this world because there's another threat that looms over these characters. I don't know if maybe a spin-off will follow all of these characters or we will be following a new couple. I really don't know. But I mean, we will see. I just hope that Jennifer does more with this world because I think that there's much more potential with the Wardens and everyone else. So overall, I rated my reread of the Harbinger series a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And guys, I finally did it. I completed the Twisted series in 2023. I initially wanted to complete it in 2022. I'm so happy I finally completed the series. I adored it. I think I gave the series an overall rating of a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Yes, I did. And I think that that rating still holds true to this day. As much as I absolutely love and adore this book series, I don't think that all of these books are perfect. I think that sometimes they were a little bit on the slower side and there were some imperfections like third act break cup of Twisted Hate in particular, <laughs> or maybe even just um, the resolution song in book one. But overall, I stand. I love this book series so much, and I think that a four out of five star rating for the entire series is accurate for me. <laughs> and then I also completed the If Love series by Anna Huang. I read this series soon after I read Twisted Lies, and I really enjoyed this series. I'm not gonna lie though, the first book is definitely not perfect. The second book is essentially a second chance romance after that first book, and I at times was rolling my eyes but then when you proceed with the second book and you finally get to the third act and realize that oh my goodness some things are not what they seem it really puts things into perspective and honestly it definitely helped my reading experience I'm so happy I did not give up on the series I really loved the series so much and I love these characters and I was honestly so happy that I had more material to read by Ada Huang I cannot wait to read her Kings of Sin series that's gonna be so exciting but overall I gave this series a rating of four out of five stars I think I gave the second book a high rating the first book a very low rating and then the two others an average rating. I really enjoyed the series overall and I would highly recommend it if you like Anna Huang's Twisted series. And yes, 2023 was also the year I finally read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Now, if you watched this video last year, you would know that Carvel did not get a high rating, but I'm happy to say that Once Upon a Broken Heart altogether, consistently, every single book got around a four out of five stars. I love this book series. I really enjoyed it and I'm so happy I did because oh my goodness, I really really did not like Carvel. And I was so concerned about what I would think about the series because everyone is recommending this book series on the internet. I'm just wondering why. Why is Once Upon a Broken Heart so hyped? I don't understand. And then I finally read the series and now I understand why. And honestly, even though it takes place within the same world as the Carvel series, it's not technically directly linked to Carvel. Yes, there are references and there are references to Jack's past, but if you don't want to continue on with the Carvel series, you don't have to because this series right here is enough. It does not have the perfect finale. That's why I did not give the final book a five out of five stars. And that's why I did not even give this like a 4.5 out of five stars. I think it's a solid four, but overall I really enjoyed it. And I'm really happy I read it in 2023. And the second last book series I completed in 2023 was the Kings of Avalier series. This series was so close to making my favorites list, but I ultimately took it off because there were so many other favorites. <laughs> My top 23, you'd think that a top 23 would be hard to create. No, it was really difficult. I had like a top 30 and this book series definitely made that top 30. <laughs> I definitely adored the second, third, and fourth books in the series. I did not love the first though. The first book in the Kings of Avalier series is what ultimately dragged it down. If I did love the first book, this series would have made my top 23, but unfortunately it did not. And that's okay. I still really love the series and I still would recommend it. I would not recommend book one though. You can read book one, see how you go with it but continue on with the series because it's really good. Book one was like, you know, a very low rating, but as the series progressed, the ratings got higher. Actually, no, that's a lie. The third book got a five out of five stars, but the fourth book got a four. It gave the series an overall rating of four out of five stars because half the series got a four out of five stars. But I mean, there is a book in the series that I have very strong feelings about, like, you know, liking it, and then I have strong feelings about despising as well. So yeah, overall, I say that four is a very safe rating for this one. And last but certainly not least, the final series that I completed in 2023 was the Frost and Nectar series by C.M. Crawford. I gave the series a 4.5 out of 5 stars because the first book I gave a 4 and the second book I gave a 5. So I definitely say that 4.5 is pretty accurate. It's definitely one of the best series I read in 2023 and I'm just really happy that I completed it by the end of 2023 because I initially was going to read it in 2024 but I didn't. I actually just read it for the first time in December and it was a great end of year binge read. <laughs> Overall, I had a really good time with it and that's it. 
Fiction. Talked about all the series I completed in 2023. Yeah, 36 series I had a very good time with. I mean, majority of them, there were some series in there that just did not mix well. But overall, I'm quite satisfied with that achievement. And I guess that's gonna be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay till the end of the video, leave me the pink heart emoji with the sparkles. And if you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social medias. Matty Swizzle Books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. I'm at gswizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. Party that we have, and I flipped it in a double. Party that we have, and I flipped it in a double.